Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello, Professor. Good afternoon. Hey, How, are you? How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, Professor. Great, great. Thank you very much. So, how is going? Uh, yeah, Professor, everything is going good. Okay, very good, very good. Are you getting the stuff? Sorry, Professor. Are you getting the stuff being covered? Ah, uh, yes, Professor. I also tried uh, the things yesterday. Okay, uh, what did you try? Ah, uh, I created a new uh, function in a uh, abstract class. Okay. Called date validity to validate the date. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. So Just please share, let me let me allow you to share your screen. Yeah, yes. So, which one? Uh, here it is. Okay. Uh, Okay, very good. So, can you just increase the font size by the gesture? Yeah, thank you very much. Hmm. Okay, so this was protection, uh, protective function, date validity. Okay, very good. So, date validity is a function which we have made in the setter class. Okay, yes, very good. Filter value, filter bar value, filter sanitize. String, so you are sanitizing a string, okay? Okay, then date ray explored. That's right. So it depends upon this thing. So what are you expecting? What is what is going to uh, come as a string? You know, it is going to come yes, as a professor. string. Uh, this is, comes like in this format, professor. Like uh, you can see date upload on. Okay. Oh, okay. So somebody is going to give date like this, you think? Okay. Yeah, 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 professor. I okay, just... like a string. Okay. Yeah, and I use so, the. But, but don't you think that this is something it would be generated by the by the JavaScript at the front end? Uh, oh, okay, okay. I thought like. Uh, Maybe look, look for happened. example, if somebody is uploading a picture, right? So that would be generated by JavaScript. Yeah, yeah, professor. Yeah, and, yeah, definitely. And JavaScript can generate like this. Okay, let's assume for now, right? Great. And uh, yes, you are getting the string, and then you are exploding it at comma, right? And that is making an array. And then you are saying that month, year, uh, month, year, date, right? And very good. And then you are validating it and return the value as you know, very good, excellent. This is good. This this is good one. Thank you. So somebody else made a function in this uh, in any of the classes. Did someone? So so let me do one thing. You know, I have not done this thing with any of the group yet, but let me do one thing. Right. Yeah. So uh, say for example, uh, please unshare your screen, and let me share. Uh, uh, with you guys, share screen. Share. So let me come over here. Let me go to GitHub account. And uh, where is the repository? This is you guys, right? Yes, yes, okay. And okay, I go to issues. Right, so maybe a new issue. Let me create a new issue. We need to populate picture class, right? Um, Sir, uh, it is a filter. 
okay Is yeah that... now now we can create okay now we can create okay great so yeah here we need to populate our picture class right so this is an issue now asap right and submit the issue right now this is the issue over here right we have this issue and now you try resolving this issue and you fork from here so uh, yeah from here you can fork from here work on the branch and submit your work in you know against this fork right and then i will show you that how can we merge your changes into the repository and then i will pull your work into to merge it into my work right so this is also part of our object oriented training that you know object oriented does not mean that i teach you that uh, how to make classes object oriented is a broader term which which you know means that how can we have modular programming and how can we collaborate with each other to code right right guys so please do this thing right and then we will discuss it tomorrow okay uh, let me stop share for a for the time being and uh, dinesh would you like to share your screen once again thank you very much um okay rather do do me a favor please stop share i'm sorry so today is 18th uh, one quick thing i'm sorry university has announced that tomorrow is our day off because of some issue right tomorrow they are you know uh, asking that there should be no class tomorrow so i would meet you after uh, this weekend so on monday right i'm sorry for this but this is from not not from me this is by the university okay uh avinash okay great avinash can you share your screen with me yes yes please Yes, sir. Yes, Avinash, can you tell me that where are we inheriting uh, our our setter class uh, in the picture class? The picture class. Yeah, where is the inheritance yes, happening? Where we are inheriting our uh, oh here yes, setter class, class picture in, into picture class? Can you take me to that line? Line of code. For oh, the sixth line. line number 6 you said as picture extension very yes, good great great so did you do some further work on the uh, on the code yes sir. i am tr uh, i am trying to uh, this is the caption class but you said that uh, we can write uh, all together in a one caption or one setter so that it will be easy to do code right so what did you do uh, about i it? i thought of uh, i tried uh, doing this in the way, in this way sir but uh, okay okay extending the caption right. over here right thank you thank you got it and where is menthan menthan are you here yes yeah. menthan can you share your screen please stop share avinash so sure. yes sir and uh, Yeah, you know, just I have to open the file. The name, uh, the name, the name, the name. I have already marked you. Don't worry about yours. Okay. Okay, professor. Okay, right. Thank you. So, Menthan, have you done something? Uh, you know, something extra? Ah, uh, no, sir. Actually, I'm like I will do in the this weekend. So. Okay. Okay. So, show me your code. Ah, uh, sure.
So okay. do you think that this picture class is inheriting from the user class? Picture class is sorry. Sir. Is is this picture class inheriting from the user class? No, sir. It's from setter. Okay, good, good, great. So yes, Shri Yash. Yes, sir. Hey, Shri Yash. Uh, please do and share your screen. Okay, sir. sir. And let Yash share his screen. Hey, Shri Yash, how is going? Yeah, it's good. Okay, great. Have you added some feature or some function, you know? In, uh, actually, I, I was trying to add it, but uh, I have one question that uh, if there is uh, some string, some integer, some dates, then uh, how can we create in uh, one class? Uh, that was my question. I can, uh, we can... For example, uh, what is your question? I, quite, I could not quite get it, my dear. Yeah. What is your question again? If we, if we come... I'm sorry? Uh, if we if we create one function that uh, fetch all the that all the information, and uh, in in a one in a in a one method, so oh, okay, you 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 are trying to do that thing, you know, which I yeah. kind of wished for, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't ask me questions about it. Otherwise, I will I will do it myself. You know, I was thinking over it, and I don't want to, you know. I would, I don't want to I can I can uh, you know stress my mind up to that extent at this moment, yeah. right? Definitely, you know, if I, I will flex my brain, I I would be, but I want you to flex your brain. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So any any other question? I'm happy that at least you gave it a try, but don't don't try to flex my brain, right? <laughs> okay. I don't want to do it now. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Try. Keep on trying. Okay. Uh, Ankit. Yes, sir. Hey, Ankit. How are you? Good, sir. How are you? Great. So, Ankit, did you add some function into the code? Uh, no, sir. I was busy doing other projects, other subject projects. Okay. I'll do it this weekend. Okay. 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 And where is Arun Teja? Yes, sir. Hey, Arun Teja, did you add some function? Yeah, I have created the settings, yes. Okay, so please uh, share your screen. Yes, sir. So what did you add? Uh, for the title, caption, file name, file type. Very good. Very good. You are doing work. I'm so much happy. But at the date I stopped, I wanted to search more Google more and yeah, yeah. Some, this is, you know, work. Google is our good friend when after it comes some, to coding. Yeah, I'll do it better for the date. Okay, good. Awesome. I'm happy that you guys are uh, working and I don't have to steal uh, too much of lecture time to, to uh, grade you guys. But grading is also important. So we have to do it, uh, you know, occasionally at least. Okay, great. So please stop share and now I will work you know, on my code. Okay. So, so let us share my screen. So this is the code we were working on. And these are three lines I have added over here, right? And I thought that I, I would add these lines and uh, then discuss them with you guys. So now the deal here is that we want to connect our code with a database, right? We want to connect our code with a database. And the database we are selecting currently is MySQL database, right? So the deal here is that in order to have that connection, we are going to use, so currently just look at line number six. We are going to use a built-in PHP class with the name PDO. So PDO stands for PHP Data Object Class, right? So we are going to work with PDO and PDO needs, PDO needs DSN database source name, PDO needs username for that particular database, 
and PDO needs password for that particular user. So the deal here is that our code is going to connect with database. Our code is going to connect with database as a user of that database. Right? Are you getting me? So like, for example, if we have a database, we interact with the database, we make tables into it, we, uh, we make search queries into it, we create insert records into it, right? We do all these things. We do all these things as a user, right? We do all these things as a user of this database. Do you agree with me on it? Right, guys? It's true. So once we we do all these things as a user with the, as a user with that database. So here, once we want to connect our code with the database, so we need to tell this thing that hey, who is the user who is trying to reach the database? So we need to give username and password. Right here, we are going to give the password. Right? So we need to give the username and the password. And then, of course, above all, we have to tell this code that which database we are trying to connect to. So here in line number five, we are giving details about the database. So here we are saying that it is MySQL database and host is sitting at 127.0.0.1, which is local host. And the database name is, that's name database, object oriented design programming, summer of 2020. Right, so this is the database name, right, which we want to connect to and this database is existing over here. So first of all, we give database source name in line number five. Then we connect with database in line number six by using this DSN, right? And username and password. So we come over here, say for example, who would be our user? So the user would be OODP, user ODP 2020 user. This is my experience that don't have a bigger username because once you try to host a, you know, this project on a real system, so normally username for databases are small, passwords are big, right? And by the way, this is the most important password you can ever have for your project. Well, once your database is hacked, you are left with nothing. Everything is gone, right? So be very sure that you have a very good password as you host your project, right, on a live server. Right, have you got it, guys? So the deal here is that before we run our code, we need to go ahead and make a database. Right, make sense? Does it make sense? Hello, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So let me come over here and let me create a database for you. So I come here plus and go to my local host. It open my VAMP server. And in the VAMP server, if I scroll a little bit down, I have PHP my admin. Right? I click PHP my admin. And uh, this is uh, root user and so go. Oh, username I have not mentioned, root user. Right, and let's go. Right, so this is this is the PHP my admin in front of you. 
so these are various databases currently hosted in the local host so let me have one more for you so i come over here so i say i need to add let me just minimize this uh, you know console where i am looking at you so that you know i can have a view you know for myself so basically this is like new right so here we have this new option so i want to create a new database right so database italics which swedish ci because you know uh, the the person who invented mysql uh, was swedish right and uh, what is my in mysql by the way who is going to tell me this thing hey manthan you tell us what is my in mysql no no idea so my is the name of the daughter of the inventor of the database <laughs> okay so and similarly the same guy created maria db and maria is his second daughter right so all these databases are named after the daughters of the inventors right so database name right so let me name this what was the name o o d p summer 2020 right so the name is you know basic structure is italian swedish which is the same set as english right so this is the database right and we say create so this database is created right this database is created now it is inviting us to it is inviting us to uh make a table create a table so the deal here is that we have a user right so where is our project uh this is right this is our project so here you can see that we have user class right we have user, you know this thing i need not to open it but let me just open it for a reference so user 2 3 4 5. so it is not our class uh Oh, this is not you guys. I'm sorry. No. Uh, okay. Yes. Let's close it. Where are you guys? Last one. This is one, yeah. right? And here you can see that we have this user seven dot php, right? So this is the user class, right? So once we have the user class, we want to create a table with the same name in database also, but with plural, right? So here we have user. So the table name would be. users right so over there we make a make a class with the make a table with the name users right table names are taken as plural by convention right so because this table is going to and similarly if you are using mongodb for example over there we instead of table we have uh, collections and collection names are again plurals right how many columns do you want so we are going to put all this array over there so you want 1 2 3 4 5 columns right we want five columns so we come over here and we say that we want five columns right guys hello everybody yes okay so we want five columns so we want to create a table with the name users having five columns we say go right so it has given us the skeleton that what kind of columns we do we want to make so we come over here we say first column name is id right first column name is id and please name them exactly as you have named them over here no spelling change no camel case to underscore underscore to camel case change whatever the name over here is you must give you uh, give the same name it will make your life so much easy and so much simple right so always remember javascript give same name 
then I'll start from HTML. HTML gives same name. Then bring it to JavaScript, again gives same name. And then once you send from JavaScript to the server end, right? Whether it is PHP or whether it is uh, um, uh, Node, right? Whether it is Python, give again the same. Always remember, right? So we come over here, it will make your life so comfortable. Okay, so first is ID, right? So I say that first is ID, I want to give ID. Name is ID, column name, so we are selecting column names here. Type is integer, right? Type is integer. We don't need to give length for integer. Default, none, right? Uh, collection, I don't see that you need to give any collection for this, right? And then we say that this is not null. You know, we don't want to have null for this. Attributes, attributes, attribute, this is unsigned, right? So this is going to be unsigned number, right? And then we say that index, it is going to be our primary key. Right, it is going to be our primary key, and this pop up uh, pop up opens. Right, it says that index primary, uh, index choice primary, advanced options no need, and int, and no need to give size, and go. So this is primary key, right? It is saying that it is primary key, and it this key for this key we want to, it to auto increment, and we give comments. Our primary key, for this table. Right, and uh, virtuality, never used it, right? So no, don't say that it is virtual, say it is stored, right? And that's it. The second column would be what? First name, first name, right? So this is first name. And by the way, once you are making database, you know, you are making a database schema, you must be in very fresh mind because we are not going to change database every now and then, right? So uh, first name and it is going to be what? It is going to be uh, var chart. Right, variable characters. Here you need to mention length, maybe 256. Right, it is not going to give assigned 256 unless you have a name uh, of length 256. Default none. Right, collection. I think that well, that initial collection is good enough, which is Swedish, uh, you know, whatever. And this is not going to have any attributes here. And this is this cannot be null and nothing else. And then we have this last name. And this is also going to be a var chart. Uh, where is there a top, sir? Oh, spring. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Var chart. And say its length is also 256. Default none. And that's it. Then we have what email? Was it email? And it's type, you know that, see, do we have email type over here now? We don't have enum type, right? Uh, sorry, email type, right? So I keep on, you know, checking this thing if there is some change. The biggest change these days is JSON, right? So, so this, is, this is marvelous. So you can put the entire MongoDB in the type, you know, JSON. Okay. And string, right? So let's make it white watcher and make it also 256, okay? 256 is good length, right? Not small. Uh, so this is 256 and then we have password 
right? And password is going to be again a var chart. And let me give it 1024, right? Because we are going to save the salt also along with it to PHP. By the way, uh, if it is node, then you know it will save the salt separate to the password hash, right? But PHP saves them together and say, for example, sometime you decide to use SHA 512 in, instead of SHA 256, then it would be even bigger, right? So I'm booking you know, 1024 there for that. Okay, so this is all done. We have selected our tables. Okay, and here, this is one more thing over here. Your storage engine by default is selected as my ISAM, uh, but I would prefer NODB. Uh, where is NODB? First one. Uh, yeah, NODB, right? So I will prefer NODB because my my SAM uh, my SAM does not support uh, relations, you know, those uh, foreign keys, right? Whereas NODB, you know, uh, support uh, foreign keys. So this is the reason that here you select NODB because we want to have make it relational database, right, guys? So having done this thing. So we can save it, right? So this was executed and you know, uh, your table is constructed. Any question guys? No. Right, so basically we have, we have created this table. So now let us try to connect with this database, right? And let us uh, try to put some entries into this database, right? So before we go, there, go over there, we need to do one more thing. We need to create a user for this database, right? And what was the name of the user, by the way? Uh, if we go to, uh, if we go to there, this one. So the name we chose was ODP 2020 user. So let's, let's make it ODP 20 user, right? Uh, as I said that I, this is my experience that as you go to host the website on the, uh, on actual server, so normally user names are, are allowed to be smaller, right? Maybe users also as small as possible, right? So because otherwise, you know, you will have to change it and it may cause, cause you some trouble. So ODP 20 US. So this is our uh, username. So let's come over here, not here, here. So where are the privileges? I don't see privileges here. So you come here and here we have the privileges. So we are having all these various users, right? And we add a new, uh, new user account. So we say username is ODP20 user. Any host, you know, it is it would be applicable any host password. I am picking one two three because this is just you know my local database. But mind this thing. And this must be as strong as possible, right? So we come here, pick another password, one, two, three means second time. And then okay, we have picked the database. So data databases for the user account, which database this user can access. So I don't want to grant global privileges, so grant all privileges on the newly created database ODP Summer 2020, right? So these are enough rights. So on this one database and we go, right? So, so basically it was successful. You have added a new user 
create user o so it is showing you uh, the command also create user o d p etc etc so this is the user being created right so uh, let's go back to database so why is this uh, okay edit okay we don't want to edit privileges right so we go to go to databases and where is our database this one is our database so this is the database we are looking at currently okay we come back over here in the code we come back over here in the code and for password we have 123 but this is the worst way to put your password in your code so normally what do you do here is that you come over here and create a new file so we come here and we say this is our new file and we say passwords.php right and here we have this php tag so we create a variable over here with the name dollar db sorry dollar db password is equal to 1 2 so one point is that it has this protection that it will protect you from onlookers so once we have this db password we copy this thing over here control c and let's close this file right and instead of 1 2 three, or what has happened 1 two three we say dollar db underscore password so what is the discrepancy over here now we need to require ones very good excellent so before we use this we need to say require ones uh, passwords dot can i have a, okay this is down there so passwords dot php and our best practice would be that we'll go to our root uh where is our root so we'll go to our root and here we will create a, oh, it is already there get ignore file and within get ignore file we'll say that backslash php classes backslash passwords dot php now what will happen that as i will share this code with you with you guys this particular file is not going to go to to you right but you know this thing that you have to create this file and you have to uh, put this variable db underscore password over there and give the password of your db whatever you have made right so you create this database yourself and uh, you you know select your password and put it over here right but this file is not going to go to you have you got it so this is our best practice that we always do this thing so having done this thing having done this thing so we have this dsn so dsn is that mysql is the name of the database colon host we mean that where is it sitting it is sitting at the local host db name is odp summer 2020 right so this is dsn database source name and then we are creating our database base connection new pdo dsn odb20 us and this has the db password right and here we are setting attribute to this connection and this uh, setting you know allows uh, 
this particular connection to throw exceptions so that we can catch them. If you don't mention this thing, it will not throw exceptions and it is not the best practice. Right, so in line number eight, we are instructing our connection to throw exceptions if there are any. Right, so PDO alter error mode and PDO error mode is exception, right? That if there is an exception, you know, give us those exceptions. Any questions so far, guys? Oh, Hello, everybody, any question? So we have made this uh, class, right? And now we want to, and now we want to create a insertion function, right? We want to create what? We want to create, and let's make this class an abstract class. So we say that it is an abstract class, right? So this is an abstract class, and we want to write our first query over here. Right, guys, are you ready? Are you ready, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So we come over here and we first of all look. Okay, let me let me first uh, make a function which is not generic and later let me convert that function into generic because this is a parent parent class, right? And here we cannot uh, make functions which are specific to user class or which are specific to a uh, picture class or something like that, right? But let me, since this is our first function uh, related to database, so uh, le let us make it uh, like this and later on we will convert it into our generic function, right? Make sense? So I come over here and I say, look at it carefully. And this is a function. So this is a public function and name of the function is insert into db. Right, insert into db, right? So we want to insert an object into db, right? And let me remove this value thing. It's not going to have any value, right? So basically it is going to insert into table, which is a function, right? We come over here and here we write our query. So let's name it SQL. Does anybody remember that what is the syntax for SQL query? Uh, it's insert into the table. Very good. Name values, values in bracket. Insert. Space into table. Insert. Into table name. Into table name, say users. Users. Values. Values. Uh, in bracket, like we have to pass five values, like ID, ID values and uh, in bracket, uh, yeah, in bracket values, right? Uh, don't you think that, that uh, we have to give columns also, right? No, sir. Uh, column will take automatic when we uh, pass the five value, it will take auto automatic. Good, but the deal here is that within values, we have ID also. Right, and ID is something which we have declared over there. Automatic increment. Uh, auto increment, right? So yeah. we cannot give ID over here, right? Yeah, otherwise it would be an error, right? So yeah. here. Yeah, sometimes it, uh, it that automatically take that. Right, so we have to give columns, right? Column, right? C-O-L-U-M-N, right? Let, let, let me get that. Is it column or what? Uh, check, so. Yeah, please check. So it is insert into users. Say it again. No, we should not give a column as. No, no, no. It is it is column, right? So is it yeah. column or columns? 
no 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 just they given as like uh, straight away the column names are there oh straight away column right yeah, very good the so users and then we give the columns right very yeah. good right within bracket name of the columns right so for example names are what are the names first name uh, id so we are not going to give id because id is a yeah. so first name a last name comma last name comma email comma password right and since it is like going uh, beyond line length right so let me have break it and then i say dollar sql so value values and let me let me show okay. you dot equal to right so i am going to concatenate it further right so here i am going to give values right what values what are the values so values and then for values i have to have brackets begin right and here i need to give dot dollar this underscore attributes sub first name right hello guys hello yes. yeah. then what last name then we need to have a comma and a space do you think we need to have a comma yeah yeah comma and space so and again space, right context. so we need to have a comma and a space right so we say dot within quotes comma, comma and space. a space yeah right we need to have a comma and a space dot comma and a space right let's break it dollar sql so dot equal is like string concatenation right it is continuously concatenating the string right and then we say what dollar this arrow underscore attributes within quotes last name right guys and then what then once again a comma and a space right guys hello yes sir okay and then what then dot then let us break over here maybe semicolon here then we say dollar sql dot equal to dollar this arrow underscore attributes sub what email email right email and then dot comma and a space are you guys getting me any issue with it okay and then we say then we come over here we say dollar sql dot equal to dollar this arrow underscore attributes sub password and then what dot then what in parenthesis yes. close cut yes back. very good we need to have those parents close right yeah. we need to have those parents close very good excellent and a semicolon also 
there is one more mistake let us see who can who can capture that mistake can you see some other mistake here i guess in value sir uh yes yes please utter please tell me yes i guess yes. we have to uh put the plus sign um, before values no why to plus sign yes no Anybody? need of semi no need of semicolon with the users no no we need to have semicolon this semicolon over here this one at the last is for php this semicolon here is for sql i, I am saying you the first lines uh first line so this is the this semicolon over here on this semicolon over here for php uh, here we are yeah. ending php statement otherwise it will give you error yes okay. are we missing uh, connecting the other so why, why don't you go to w3 school and my sql and see that what is insert query insert query uh, syntax and just look at it carefully and tell me what what is missing here what are we missing here after insert into user dot will come insert into users a dot will come i don't think so no dot no so all the all the values in the colons in double colon and double quotation in all the values not double quotation just so all the values <laughs> must be in single quotes single quotes okay. always remember right so in sql all the values must be in single quotes right my sql does not accept double quotes right so we need to give quotes also right so look look at it carefully i am going to give one single quote here did you see yes. then i am going to go give one single quote over here and one single quote over here so this single quote over here is closing single quote for the first name and this single quote over here is the opening single quote for the next one and then we need to have a closing single uh, single quote for this one and an opening single quote for the next one right and then we have to have a closing single quote for this one and an opening single quote for the next one and then we have to have a closing single quote for this one save it so now i hope i hope keeping the finger crossed right that now it is good so what should i do what should i do i should definitely i have to run it but before i go ahead and run it i will do one more thing i'll come over here and i would say return right either return it or just echo it out right so once we'll echo it it would be printing or printed over on our page and once it is printed on our page right we can copy this and put it into sql interface and see that does it run now if it runs over there then yes we can go ahead with it with with the coding are you getting me uh should i have one question that uh if we every time concatenate uh, concatenate that a string it take uh, it, isn't it uh, take a more time than uh, in a single in a single string so if you want to make it into a single string it would be a big mess and no it is not going to take too much of time right so if you are okay. saying that uh, i should break the line with enter sign and keep on writing in one line yeah in in like in java uh, if we use a string 
and if we concate that string that it take uh, n square times because uh, okay, it, it takes n square okay. one other, uh, no. I, I don't see that uh, yes why would it take n square time uh, in uh, in a simple string because uh, it take uh, if, if there, there are two string then a, a first string it is uh, is stored in a one array and if right. another another string is storing another array, so after it concatenate, it it it, uh, uh, it will take uh, uh, copy of uh, uh, miss, uh, it will uh, copy another array uh, and enter the average string in that uh, big array. Okay, so but I, I don't think that it is going to take that long. Not n square, it will still be n order n. Yeah, but yeah, if we use string builder in Java, then we 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 take okay. only order. But but my dear, this is a very good point, right? I will read uh, through Java also and see that what is this issue. But mm. such things are unavoidable. I will show you why. Because I, this is the first time I'm building a query for you, and I'm building it manually, right? Later on, these queries would be built automatically, right, by using loops. So, so basically we need to have this thing. We cannot avoid it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I will show you that, you know, uh, how can we, uh, how are we going to do it and why can, can't we avoid it? Right. So, so basically we are echoing this string out and let's see if it is working. Right. So I come back over here. Uh, Dinesh, you have a question. Okay. So we come over here and, uh, in our classes folder, let's have our index uh, folder op uh, file open, right? And here, once I have created a user, right? Let me come over here and let me say that, that insert this into a table. So what was the name of the function? Uh, wait a minute. So right over here, so insert into table, into DB, sorry, control C. And where is my index, this one? So I say dollar user one, right? Now this function would be available to it through inheritance, right? So insert, into db, right? Insert into db. It will not currently insert into db, but it will print the query for us, right? It will print the query for us. And once it will print the query for us, it will give us this opportunity to test that whether the query is right or wrong. Make sense? Make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, we come over here. And we open our project, reload it. Okay, it has printed this query for us, right? So here, let us copy this. Copy this from here, up to here, control C. Take it to PHP my admin. See that you are in the right database. You go to SQL tab and paste this query over here and say go. Right? So what is the message? Oh, it has errors, right? So what is the error? You have an error in your SQL syntax. Check the manual that corresponds to your MySQL server version for the right syntax to use. You have, you are hacked. Okay. So in alert, there ah, are double okay, okay, no okay, two okay, times okay. quotation. That's why. Huh? In alert. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the deal here is that we were actually testing something else. So let's put some reasonable name, right? Frank, right, save it. So we come back and we rerun our code. So yeah, so because of these quotes quotation issues, right? Great. So now let's copy this. Control C 
and we go to our here control V and let's go right so basically one row inserted so your query is good right your query is good so if you go to the structure right you can see that there's one table and go to the table right by itself here you have inserted one entry uh, yeah here it is so it's, the id is one frank lewis right email is this and this is the password so query is doing good right query is doing good so once query is doing good now is the time to uh, run this query through your code right to run this query through your code everybody is good so hello okay so we come back over here and we say that we want to run it through our code so where is that file this is the file so how to run it right so we cut it out sql is good so now we put it into try catch block so try catch we say dollar db right so basically db is your connection with your database right it is up there right dollar db so everything is going to run with dollar db so we say dollar db so once you want to insert right this is this is insertion not search so search is done by query operation right and are the rest of the operations are done by by what by exec right so all the rest of the operations are done by exec right am i right so this is doing so we execute the db and once we have an exception we throw it from here right and this will run the query and it will execute it for us so save it let's go back in index uh, no no not in index we we'll go back in the database let's delete this record record which was previously added so let's select it and let's delete it where is the deletion yeah here it is right delete what is there deleting so anyhow it gets auto incremented and uh, reload again right? yeah you're right but i want to delete it right so just delete it right so just wanted to show you this also. so so one row is deleted there is nothing over here right so we come back over here right we come back over here and uh, uh, into our web page and we reload it right so just just by reloading we would be creating it from now oh undefined variable db right so look what is the issue that db is defined in what space Hello, everybody. It is in the class DB. And it is in the global space, my dear. It is not in the class. It is in the global space, right? So we have to tell this table that worry, don't worry, don't worry. This is global. So global dollar DB. Right? So it is global. Save it. So this is global, right? And now we run it again, right? So it ran and let us go to the database. 
refresh it. And you can see that we have got our record back. But uh, it is in to ID is sure. ID is too, right? So this is the feature for uh, my MySQL that once you delete a record from a table, MySQL does not reassign the ID. Oh, okay. okay. Right? So that one is gone. It would not be given to any other record. Okay. Right, so this is a good thing that that one would not be replaced by some other record. So, is it because we mentioned it as the primary key? Because we have mentioned it as a primary key, yes, and and because it was on auto incrementing. Right, so it will increment. Okay, got it. Hello, everybody. Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay, great. So we have ran this query like this and this is working, right? So let us move towards uh, making this function a little bit more generic, right? So this is like, you know, very fixed kind of very rigid kind of function. So let us make this function a little bit more generic. And as I will make, where is Yash? Yash, you are here? Okay, great, great, good. So so as we'll make it a little more generic, we will answer yes, you know, that question also. So let me just copy this. So let me say that insert into DB. So let me copy this function. So this is starting here, ending here. This is very important that you get to know the brackets good, control C. And let me say this is first version. Later on, I will, I'm going to delete it, but for now, you know, I want you to have it, right? So that you understand that how did we evolve this code, right? So this is very important. You saw this thing that I came to this shape of the classes after so many steps, so that you know that uh, what is the final shape of a class? And why is this uh, final shape so important? And similarly, I'm going to this make this function to three steps. So let's see, we come over here, we paste it over here. So this is uh, insert into DB and let's make it into a uh, second step, right? So we come over here, we say insert into users, right? Let's do this thing. Let's remove it all from here. Let's put quotes and break it over here. Let me say that this is SQL1, right? This is what? This is SQL1. And let me start making SQL2 also. And SQL2, I'm going to make like this. See carefully. Right? So this is my SQL2. Right? This is my SQL2. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is my SQL2, right? Now what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to say, let me put semicolon here. Otherwise this uh, PHP will keep on bugging me. Oh, sorry. So I come over here and I say, for each for each variable as key value pair right so i say for each 
डॉलर डॉलर दिस एरो अंडर स्कोर एट्रीब्यूट राइट फॉर फॉर ईच एलिमेंट ऑफ दिस अरे एज की वैल्यू पेयर run this code what is this code so code is dollar sql 1 dot equal to dollar and dollar sql2 is dot equal to why is this for each you know is kind of green why is it not turning blue hmm this is kind of annoying me for each let me show let me see uh uh let me come over here let me write for each over here for each look it is turning blue here right can you see this thing but over there it is not turning blue why is there some error over there let me come back over here and let me write this for each again Hmm. Maybe because there is some error. So let me just what error is there? Why is it not turning this move right? So okay, no problem. we'll see it okay okay so sql2 dot equal to see carefully dollar value dot within quotes single quotes comma space and as you and then semicolon and as it come out of here this for each loop so we say dollar sql is equal to dollar sql 1 dot dollar SQL two, and let us let me just remove this for now. Something is seriously wrong here, guys. Ah. Uh, What's wrong? Something is wrong. So let let me do this thing. Something is very wrong. So let me just cut it all. Now everything is good, right? so now everything is good and brackets are matching 
okay bracket is matching okay now see and let me let me just put these comment sections control v and now something is broken so let us figure out so this bracket is ending here right this bracket is ending here I think there is some code problem. Ah, oh, okay, okay. No, 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 no. Issue, issue, issue is something else. Don't worry. It is not a problem, right? So sometimes, you know, uh, editors uh, start messing up. So for example, this thing is missing that this bracket over here is opening and it is not closing. So basically it is feeling very bad about it, right? So we do this thing, don't worry. So for each and values and we need to close this bracket. So we say dollar SQL dot is closing bracket dot dollar SQL two and then it's closing bracket. Right? And now they are good. Yes, now they are good. They are still mess trying to mess up with okay. for each, but I don't worry. Huh? Unfortunate that uh, Brave is not sufficient so that uh, it will say it again. In a variable SQL1 and SQL2, we can uh, concatenate the bracket, right? You you need to speak into your mic, please. I, I cannot quite hear you. I'm uh, sorry. Sorry, in SQL1 and SQL2 variables, uh, say it again. In SQL1 and SQL2 variables, right. So we can concatenate the brackets now so that we can get rid of this error. Uh, which brackets? Uh, after values, there is an open bracket now. Yeah, there's an open bracket, but that open bracket is going to have like values. Yes, yes. We can concatenate the bracket, right? There, there aren't any issues, right? In so we, we are concatenating that over here. Okay. Right? And this is that we are concatenating over here. So let's run the code and let's see what comes out of it. After let's values, see. there is a single code. Uh, where is that? Uh, in a SQL2, there is a, after value, there is a one single code. Yeah, one single code there should be, as we saw that values are enclosed in single quotes. Right, we need to have that single code. So for each is like acting is uh, like a loop. Sir. Yeah, for each is definitely, don't you know for, uh, no for each? So inside for loop? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, I can show you. Don't worry. Look, 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 how does it work, right? So let me show you how does for each work, right? So let me have a new file over here. Understanding. Understanding for each dot PHP. Right, so say PHP. Say we have an array over here. Let me copy that array. Say this is an array. And let me say dollar my array. is equal to this. So this is an array, right? Right? And we want to iterate through this array. So we come over here, we say for each of element of my array, treat it as key value pair and let's echo it out. echo dollar key dot the value is
for dollar key the value is right so this is the value and uh, we are iterating through this array and that's it save it and let's run it okay so that you can understand what's going on over here um mm, Right, so let, let's correct it a little bit. So for example, after this echo out, we can say add a line break, right? Save it and let's come back over here. Reload it, right? For ID, the value is one. For uh, first name, the value is Frank. For the last name, uh, value is Louis. For email, the value is this, right? So basically, now, with the help of this example, probably you have understood already that what is this for each loop. Have you or uh, should I need to explain it further? No, sir. You have got it now? Yes. Right. So basically this for each is, the, is a very good way to iterate through an array, especially when we don't have indices. Right. So we have an associated array for associated array for each is a good way to iterate. Right. In JavaScript also we have this for each, but it is like inbuilt method and it is for with capital E as each. So my point is now in the class dot uh, db object seven dot php. Right, let me take you over there. Okay, we are uh, for, at the for each. Uh, Say it again. Okay. Here outside for each we are opening the single quoted uh, this one, but after for each running for the first time we are not closing the single quoted thing. Okay, that, the... so that that issue can be resolved once we see the string that will give us the idea. Okay, so let's do this thing. Let's echo this string out, and then we resolve these issues, right? Yes. So let's echo it out. So echo dollar SQL. So let's run this code and see that what happens and then we decide according to that, okay? Make sense? So always remember, always remember that whenever we are writing a function, we don't write it all. We write it in pieces. We see that where something is not fitting right and then we fix it and then we go further. Right, so we come here and we re, uh, we just close it and let's reload it. Okay. So look, one thing is that insert into users and these are all messed up. ID and then there is no comma, space, first name, these are all messed up, right? So let's, let's first of all remove this issue. So we come over here, we say, key dot key dot dot is string concatenation within quotes comma space right so every for every after every key value there should be a comma and a space so this is something we have resolved let's go back over there and reload it Right now you can see that we have got that comma and space over here, right? And now here you can see that insert into users and there is no space between this bracket and values, right? So let's resolve this issue. We come over here and we see that here we need to give a space. And so we have to remove the comma from the last value. Yeah, this is the next thing I wanted to do actually. Yeah. <laughs> You have caught me. Okay, so basically let's reload it, right? And you can see this thing that now there's a space. Now look, this one has single course, Frank has single course, this has single course, this has single course. 
this has single quotes and last comma and last this uh, sing, this uh, single quote is extra number one and comma and space is extra right so let's see you know from where i'm getting this single quote so where i'm getting this single in quote? for each 23 so third, yeah, this one know. right so this one is extra okay so let's come here so maybe something extra over here also look here we have this comma and space extra right in one we have comma single quotes and space extra and here we have this thing extra right what should we do uh we have to like uh we have to remove the last last character from the string one we, and we need to have remove last two characters from str from the string, string one and, and last three characters from the string two right yeah. so we come over here we say as we come out of for each loop we say dollar sql1 dollar sql1 is equal to uh, okay so now i am i'm going to use some string function slice for example right so let me take help about slice so I come over here, I say PHP string slice. Right, so how to slice a string in PHP? I want to see, I don't want to see uh, this manual, which is tough to read. So substring, right? So it's substring. So W3 school. So we say substring, string, and then, you know, okay, let's see more. So, you know, this is very important that you should be able to see the re reference and manual, you know. So this, this, is, this is kind of thing we want to do, right? So substring, S-U-B-S-T-R, right? So we come over here, we say SQL1 substring, right? Substring and string name is dollar SQL1 comma starting index zero what is the ending index minus two minus two, minus two or minus three uh, minus one minus, minus, minus two. two minus two minus two sir. minus three let's try you know let's the say. good thing about computer science is that <laughs> we are not going to make a bridge right <laughs> which is great and going to fall down right okay and this is dollar SQL2 is equal to substring dollar SQL2 comma zero comma negative four. A minus two is fine, sir. I see that. Okay. Yeah. Minus two. Is so. Yeah. Save it, right? Save it and let's see. Now everything is good. Okay. We come back here. We reload our page. Okay. Excellent. Your, your, your counting is better than me or mine, right? So look, ID, first name, last name, email, password, no comma, no space. Very good. And here, no extra comma at the end, no extra quotation at the end. We have figured it out up till here, but there is one more thing. We need to have a semicolon at the end. I've been a little bit more conservative. So I need to have semicolon here. What else? What else? I don't want to have ID over here because ID is auto increment, right? Hello, everybody. Right, right, right. Sir. Right. So we don't want ID to come here. So we come back over here. We say run this for each loop. If 
dollar P is not equal to I. Right, so avoid ID and for rest of them make the query, right? Let's run it once more. Run it, right? No more ID, right? And let's copy this query. Copy, take it to my SQL. Let's remove this record. Okay, removed. Go to SQL. Paste it over here. And go. Right, one row inserted. And you can see this row over here in the table. Uh -huh. Right over here, right? No, this is the structure. Where is the table? Should I go over here? Right. So here you can see that I have got it back. So query is good. Once query is good, now I can run it. Okay, so I come back over here. I copy this particular thing from here. And instead of echo, I paste it over here. Right? Now this function is a little bit more generic and yes. Look, once we want to generate queries with the help of loops, and this is this is something we, we must do always, right? So we we cannot avoid string concatenation. Yeah. Can you see this thing? Yes, sir. Right? So this is not possible for us to, you know, avoid this thing. So once we have done so, once we have done so, save it. And let us go to our database. Let's remove this record. Right? Yes, you know, I'm a little bit, you know, a little bit want to be clean that I don't want to have duplicate similar records. Okay, so uh, I come back over here, uh, not here, come back over here, and I reload the page. So I come back in the SQL, reload it, and I have got that record back. Now my function is little bit more generic, right? Can you see this thing? It is little bit more generic. What is not generic about it? Say it again. Huh? SQL command like insert into we can make it so like uh, no 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 no. So, so, so how can how can we insert the multiple like values? Well, that is that is a very okay, different thing. Okay. But but the deal here is that non-generic part over here is that the name of the table is fixed. Right? Name of the table is fixed. So the deal here is that if it is coming from the user class, the name of the table would be users. If it is coming from the uh, uh, pictures class, right, or picture class, right, so the name of the table would be pictures. So this is something which is still not generic about it. And this is something I'm going to fix next in my next lecture, right? So I think I should stop over here. Do you have any question about this lecture or about any other thing? So if there is no question, I will stop over here. Uh, let me just send the code to you all. So cd space dot dot.
cd space odp summer of 2020 huh what has happened it was some cs dot dot you type mistake right? cd dot dot instead of oh okay oh, oh cd did not work cd dot dot so cd o d p summer of 2020 right get status get i am on branch master right am i yes and get add dot get commit minus m uh, uh db connection please mind this thing that you have to make your db connection right you have to make your db you have to set the password you have to set the user that you will do yourself i believe that you should be able to do it so db connection and insertion right so committed and get push right so you should be able to get it right guys so stop share and uh, so if you have any question or you want to have me for your office hours i'm available right now stay in this communication otherwise you can simply drop out thank you very much by the way i will see you all on monday because university has announced that tomorrow is day off right so we cannot have class tomorrow right i'm sorry for that have a good rest of the day goodbye Then good evening. Uh, good evening. Yes, yes. I I got, I wanted to ask this. I got B in my midterm for this course. And don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is just an assessed grade, right? So I have given B to so many people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry about it. If this I is, want to, thing, no, don't worry about it. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm like. Uh, uh, I missed some classes. No, 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 no nothing beginning. like that. Nothing like that. So if I can get some extra assignments to for. If I'm lagging behind the class, like.